Hi everyone, my name is Alex Martinez, I am a developer advocate at MuleSoft, and today we're going to see a quick overview of the Anypoint Code Builder October release and its new features. When you start a new project, you now have the ability to select the Mule runtime for H0. If you haven't downloaded it, this will download it automatically for you, and the Java version stays as is, with Java version 11 or 17 to be selected. ACB now includes a UI support for the connection configurations, for example, an HTTP listener. As you can see from here, we don't have any connector configuration set up, so you just have to come here, click on the plus button to add a new connection. This will open this new window where you will be able to set your properties like the host and the port. In this example, there are also other advanced properties that you can set up or some notes that you can add for this configuration. Then just click on add and the connection configuration will be automatically added and selected here for you. You can also edit the connection by clicking on this gear button right here and this will open the same UI where you can edit your configuration. ACV now supports the UI for advanced data types. For example, for this file listener, if you scroll down, you will be able to see the scheduling strategy. Now you can select fixed frequency or cron and you can modify these details to whatever you need for this configuration. Another cool thing is the transform message component that you can now set the configuration for the payload, for the attributes, or even to create new variables inside the transform message. You can keep adding variables if you need more, or you can remove all of them. Inside all of these fields, you are able to select if you want to do a script or if you want to select a resource, for example, dw slash test .dwl, which would reference to the test included in the dw file inside source main resources, in this case is dw for the folder that I selected, and test.dwl for the file that I'm selecting here as a resource. You now have the option to add API auto discovery into your global elements. Simply search for API, you will see the API gateway auto discovery, select that, and you just have to select the API ID and the flow reference to enable auto discovery from any point code builder. ACP now includes a visual debugger where you can add your breakpoints directly into the visual part instead of having to use the XML. You can remove or add the breakpoints in the XML part as well, but now you have the ability to do it visually. Not only that, once you start debugging, you will be able to follow through the flow in the visual way. So right now we're running the application. Let's send a curl request. And as we can see from here, the mule message and the payload right now is empty. We have some attributes to this, but if we click on continue, we will get here to the logger and our mule message now says hello mule. So if we continue, we will be able to get the output of hello mule. And we were also able to follow through the whole flow while debugging visually. ACB now includes the support for deployment to Cloud Hub 2.0. You can come here to the Deploy to Cloud Hub button, click on it, select Cloud Hub 1 or 2, in my case it's going to be 2, select your share space, in my case it's going to Cloud Hub US East 2, your environment sandbox, then you will see a JSON file like this to deploy to Cloud Hub 2.0. You can now generate MUnit coverage reports in ACB. As you can see from here, you have the test coverage, here you will be able to see the percentage of each of the configuration files. For example, my ACB basic M units has 100% coverage, while my not tested XML file has 0% coverage. This will give us a total of 80% of coverage from all my flows. You can also see it from the Explorer tab. So for example, here we have the ACB and basic M units with 100%. The not tested with 0%, and you can also see the files and the folders, sorry, from source main mule that have 80%. Another cool thing is that if you open your settings, your Visual Studio Code settings, you can search for coverage, click on the edit in settings.json here, 
And as you can see from here, you are able to set which percentage or which threshold you are able to set for the red, the yellow, and the green colors. So we have all of those features plus more innovations that we'll take a closer look at in future videos. So just to mention them quickly, one of the features that we will take a look at in further videos is the custom connector support. You will be able to add locally bundled connectors to your project just by importing them in your Palm XML file. This will let you leverage open source or custom connectors like the MuleSoft AI chain. You can now publish the Mule app to Exchange as a template or as an example. Plus, there is even more event-driven support on AnyPoint Code Builder. Before, we used to have Kafka and AnyPoint MQ support for async APIs, but now you can implement these APIs with Solace, Salesforce platform events, and you can even make use of Abro. Not only that, you can now design your async API specifications directly in AnyPoint Code Builder and be able to govern them using API governance. So just to mention really quickly the Avro schema support in design and implementation, Avro is now supported in the API specification design as well as implementation so you can validate your messages and provide data sense support. So that was a lot of news. I hope that you are as excited as I am to start trying the new features for AnyPoint Code Builder. I have not tried all of them yet, so I can't wait to see all of your content and I can't wait to start creating my own content on all of the new fun stuff that AnyPoint Code Builder October 24 release is bringing to us. All right, so keep posted for more videos. I will see you in the next video. Bye.